Acrylic media skins on sheer fabrics using Mod Podge and glazing medium and acrylic paints. I really enjoy a good challenge and a really good experiment where one can experiment with different art media on hand and discover what will happen if. Well, this past week I was intrigued and challenged by a video uploaded by Susie Dennis. See the description box below for a link to her channel and blog where she created media skins using Mod Podge, matte medium, acrylic paints, and fabric. It was time. It was time to try this out for myself and see just what I could create. This video is segmented over a period of about three days. Come along, see what I created with some old sheer curtains. Hi there. This is a video response to a video done by Susie Dennis where she experimented with acrylic paints and uh, fabric and Mod Podge and I believe clear gesso or a, a medium. I'm going to do the same thing. She used a cotton-based dishcloth, and I thought that was very neat, but I had posted, I had wondered how it would work with an organza or a fine weave like a lace type material, and she's going to try some experiments, and I'm going to try some experiments. So this is going to take place over a couple of days because there's significant drying time in them in doing this so first I'm going to show you the lace I just found two types of lace I don't have any organza on hand but this is a snip from that old tablecloth that I was using to do my ink sprays on you can see I got just a little ink spray down in this area it's a little black but I don't think that will hurt much I'm going to use well actually I'll probably use this side of it, put it down face down this way after I get my acrylic base done. So I have that that I'm going to experiment with. And what I'm most interested in is to see how it will work with this lacy type in here. The weave, this is not a hand lace. This is done by machine for sure. I mean, this is just a, a tablecloth that you would buy at Target or someplace. I got got it at the thrift store. I do not have organza. I'm hoping that she'll do some organza. Then, but I do have this very fine piece of lace, and you can see the net, the netting in here is very fine. And then it has these these flowers up in here. And, and here again, I do, I I'm sure this is done by machine. But it's also, it's a, it's a pretty lace. I got this at, at uh, either a thrift store or an antique store. I'm not sure where. I got a couple yards of it. This could be a curtain material. Um, but it's, it was not a curtain when I bought it. It looks like it's curtain fabric. It's just a very sheer lace. So I'm going to experiment with these two. Now she started out, Susie started out by, and and I think I'll do my experiment with the tablecloth by mimicking what she did. She started out first, now I'm going to have to turn my camera, let's see, if I turn it, I want to put this piece over here. I'm going to have to turn my camera a little because I'm going to do these both on this two different types of experiments both at the same time on the same sheet of paper. So let's see if I can't just turn my camera a little maybe so that you can see what I'm doing. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, so on this side of the paper the first thing that she did was apply some acrylic paint. Now she applied hers in a and and she noted this in her in her video that she did that she put a a square of I believe it was like a purplish lavender paint and uh, she pointed out that 
you probably want whatever whatever way that you do it is is going to be the top <laughs> so when you pull it off of the sheet so I'm not going to put a square I think I'm going to start out by using some folk art metallic and this is a peridot it's a, a pretty green Right in here is where I'm going to put the first layer for the lace but I'm not going to put the lace down I'm going to put the layer down but it's not going to be paint I am going to put a really thick layer and you could probably do this with well I'll do it with both Mod Podge or glazing medium and I think Mod Podge this is the gloss Luster Mod Podge, and this is an old bottle, and there may be some lumps in the bottom of this, but I'll, I'll scoosh those out. In fact, this is a perfect way to use it up. Okay, I'm ready to, I am ready to put the second layer on my experiment here that I'm doing as a challenge to Susie Davis or an experiment. I don't really call it a challenge, it's an experiment. And uh, this side I think I'll work on first. So I'm going to turn my camera a little so you can see it. This I did yesterday. I painted the freezer paper there we go I think you got a pretty good view of it for it painted the freezer paper with uh, metallic paint and glitter paint so I'm gonna put some I'm using up my Mod Podge gloss luster whatever's in there I'm just gonna put on there I'm gonna put a layer of Mod Podge on it I will probably, uh, it's pretty empty. I'll probably put some water in there and, and dilute it for a to collage on a page before I throw that away. I've got another little half empty bottle, not even half. And I'm doing this this will dry clear too I'm doing it more to add strength to the, my layer because on this one I really do not have a paint as my first layer my first layer is glazing medium and so I know this will peel up because I tested it but it'll be very thin and I just want more strength on it Hi there. Well, my second layer is all dry. This is the paint side of my experiment. And 
I've tried to get a really close up view with my camera even though I don't have zoom. I want to show you, I use Mod Podge and I've been trying to see how this will pull off. And look at this very transparent layer here. Um, let's see if I can get it in the frame a little bit more. See that very transparency in there? So I think this is going to work really well. I'm ready to put on the final layer, which will be a layer of my um, sheer fabric, or what I'm calling sheer fabric. I'm using a sheer lace like this that I cut off of a, of a piece of fabric that I got. I think it's probably curtain material, but it was not a curtain when I bought it. It was more yardage when I purchased it. And... I had cut off a, let me get it out here, it's kind of holding on to things. I cut out a section of tablecloth that I was using for, to spray stencils through. But I really think that this is not sheer enough for my thinking. This part in here, this part in here is sheer enough and if I had more of this type of a, of a weave, I would probably use it and you could probably see the underside really well but that's not what I want I want both sides to show through so I went through my stash again and I had also used this curtain valance this is a, a, a valance for a curtain but see how much more sheer it is and so I think I'm going to use it now I've been debating how much do I want the fabric to show and how much do I want the painting to show. The painting will show on the front side all the way and I suppose I suppose I won't use the side I've already sprayed through. I'll keep it relative. to see this is a This is a curtain valance, but I don't, I think I'm going to cut off the valance part and just use that part for something else. And then this part will be clean on both sides. So, and this experiment that I'm doing comes from here over to here. If you can see from, no, you can't see. Well, it extends out. It extends out. I'm trying to get it. I got it almost too close. Extends out to here uh, and then over to here. So I'm trying to figure out how much of my design that I want to snip off. I mean, how much of my fabric that I want to snip off for my design. And I think I'll snip it off to the very edge, which would come just about in the center of this flower. Well, no, more to the beginning of it, but I like that. Okay, so but I'm going to cut down, I'm going to snip down the center, and then I'm going to snip this off. So let's snip down the around so you can see my other experiment see this one this is the one with the um, what did I do with it with the glazing medium and glazing medium and dilution spray and I really 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 like this it really turned out good and of course it's up over on this side but I was testing on how this would pull up. Can you see off of this corner? Look how this pulls up very, you have to pull it gently, but this is gonna pull up nice as a sheet. Now it's gonna be pretty flexible. However, 
I was also experimenting with what I wanted to put on here and originally let me get my lace out of the way my big curtain glance out of the way because I'm done with that for now originally I was going to use a piece like this and I do like that I cut some more of it I liked it so well ooh I like this Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? And then put this piece here. Hmm. Hi there. I am so excited. After three days of working on this in various stages, I get to pull my sheer lace gessels and media skins off of the paper. And as you can see here, look at that. Can you see how that is pulling off? Look at the transparency there. Wow. This was a curtain valance that I worked on. And I'm just going to pull it off. I'm so excited to do this. It's pulling off really nice. I put heavy coats of, of uh, paint and gesso on the bottom. Oh, wow, look. On the back of the gessoed paper and then I wanted to experiment with a sheer fabric material such as a, a lacy curtain and that's what I have here. Wow. Look it pulls off into one big, let me move the white so maybe you can Oops, I've got another white underneath. You can see it better. Look at that. Look how sheer it is. And here is the back. Wow. It feels like a plastic almost. A real thick, soft plastic. And of course, that's what it is. And I would suppose that Now Susie coated hers with a matte medium. I'm debating whether I just want to set this in my figuring book. And if you haven't heard me refer to my figuring book before, here it is. It's just a, a book of where I do trials and experiments and various things in there. I think for now, this is very, very, uh, I think for now I'm just going to place it in here, just like that. But wow, look at this. I don't think I'll be cutting this up, but I could see, I could see where if you just wanted to use this application or, or, um, I went for a sort of an organic leaf with my metallic paints. If I can get the shine off of it a little here, maybe. Wow, how interesting. And you can see, you can see my hand. See my hand moving around behind there? Very transparent. I could see, <laughs> I could see making window clings or maybe jar, mason jar. I could see this wrapped around the mason jar. And I don't know if the jar got hot, what it would do to the acrylic base. 
You could probably didn't even fold it in half. Well, why would you want to do that? You could use it on collage. I like the idea of putting it around a jar. Wow, how fun is that? I'm going to put it in my figuring book and just keep it. It's going to fall out. I'm like, it's going to, uh, maybe I'll put it like this and see how it keeps. Put it this way, maybe. It will crease there, but that's okay. So there's the first one. I'm going to put my figuring book aside for a minute. Now let's pull the other one. I'm pretty excited about the other one because the other one I'm actually going to use. I think I showed this to you before. Our art group, AFTCM. We are doing pennants. Sort of like a year-long project. And of course, we do one for swap, but I always do a like one to keep for myself. And the theme is winter vintage. And we're using cream colors. And of course, for February, I added a little light pink. But I'm re getting ready to do March. So, my idea was... On the other side here, here's how it dried. I sprayed it with dilutions, and then I used this very thin curtain knit um, material over it. And then I coated it again with uh, clear, glazy, uh, clear glaze, glazing medium. And then I applied that curtain. Now, I've lost some of the detail of the curtain because of my... I sprayed it with white linen, but that's okay for this project. I actually prefer it to have more of the detail of the before I applied that white linen. But for the project, for my pennant project, which I'm going to work for on March, I actually wanted more of that white in there. So this is ideal. And let's pull it and see what happens. It's going to pull very nice again. You want to gently pull this so you don't tear it. Can you see what's happening? Oh, and it's pulling so, 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 so nice. Wow. Get my freezer paper out of the way and I'll show it to you here. Wow, isn't that cool? Susie, you've inspired me. Here's the back of it. You can see this was a clear glazing medium. And then in that glazing medium, while it was still wet, I applied it to the freezer paper. And while it was still wet, I sprayed some Dilutions spray. And that gave me this, you can even see up in here you can even see the spray the specks from the spray i really like how that worked now this again is very um very much of a, i don't i think i did do a second layer of mod podge on the top here before i applied my lace and then i went over it again with glazing medium but here again it's very uh it's very flexible, and I, I would think that this, because this is glazing medium, that it might stick. But I could see wrapping... I'm going to use it for my pennants. See, I can get... I can get at least four, I think, pennants out of this. One, two... I think I can get four... <gasps> excuse me, four pennants. One, two, three, and then I can probably get one out of there. And then what's left over, I'll probably just put in my my little my little figuring book, which is my book of experiments. And here again, here's the back side of it. You could do a number of things with this. You can collage with it. You could put it as a background in a journal page. 
you could actually apply this. You could actually do this entire thing on your journal page. You don't have to do it on freezer paper. Or you could put it around the uh, a glass jar, such like that. And then, you know, do multimedia on that. Of course, if that were glass, it would be transparent and you could you could see through it like you can. Well, here. Look, it's it it will, I think, stick together. I think if I would fold this and keep it like that, see it will it will stick in time. And I think that's why Susie applied a layer of of, uh, I said clear gesso. I think she used a matte medium on hers. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to put this side down on my pennant. And this side will be up. I'm going to cut this up. But wow, look at the texture. Look at the texture on that. Isn't that fun? And it is... I can see the transparency. Meet. I don't. You can kind of see my hand move through there. Look at that. But again, keep in mind that I did put a layer of um, white linen on this, and white linen is opaque. So there is one, and here's here's the other one. Thank you, Susie, for the, the challenge and the ideas and for letting me experiment and play along with you on this, on this uh, idea. There's nothing that I like more than experimenting and tr testing out new techniques and, and learning new things. So. I'll probably be doing more of this in the future with different projects. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this and if you enjoy my videos please subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next page.